everyone wants to learn the next big thing. AI, Rust, PHP, but sometimes the most valuable programming skills are the ones that are often overlooked. Let's start off with the shell. Whether you're using the Born Again shell, New Shell, Zish, Kush, Fish, I'm begging you, please learn beyond CD and LS. The amount of so-called tech bros I see going cat pipe grep makes me want to tear my hair out. Grep already reads the file. Sure, technically these days you can simply get away with chat GPT and inshallah all your shell commands. But that's a recipe for skill issue and astagfirullah. Brother, uh... What's that? Learning the shell makes you fast in a way that actually matters. You can set up projects, move files, search logs almost instantly. There's zero friction between you and getting something done. Think of all the glorious time you can get back and spend that watching One Piece. The shell shows you what's happening under the hood, instead of hiding it behind liquid trash UIs. And it's practically the same everywhere. Whether you're on a server, a Docker container, a computer, unless you're on Windows, the theory and file system are identical. I'm not saying to go memorize a bunch of commands, tattoo a cheat sheet on your arm, or even become a wizard at shell scripting. Speaking of which, why do we call it a programming wizard anyway? How I recommend learning the shell is simply spending an hour or two on the weekend and trying your best to use the terminal for every single action you do. Whether you open your code editor, view a file, make a directory, just use the terminal with a tool like Shellcheck, a linter for shell commands. And if you prefer structured learning, I recommend the Linux command line book. And if you don't like reading, there's always a chad from the Indian subcontinent that can teach you on YouTube. And low-key the best benefit of getting good at shell? You look absolutely cracked to anyone who watches you code. Git. We all know the good old PPL routine. Git pull, git push, git ligma. <laughs> when talking about git, there's two ways to think about it. The first is pretty obvious. It's learning git commands. Beyond push-pull, there's the holy trinity, rebase, stash, and reflog. Rebasing lets you rewrite history like a corrupt politician from the third world. To this day, I still find it kind of scary, but it's really good for cleaning up a massive pull request that's been absolutely cooked. Then there's git stash, which is one of those situations where what you see is what you get. It's a pause button so you can save your changes and get back to it later. I found it super useful when I'm halfway through a feature, but I need to switch branches for another critical prod issue. Critical prod issue is the polite term for sales crying about something and your manager forcing you to context switch. And finally, there's reflog or reflog, where every branch switch, commit, and reset is tracked. It's basically having your footsteps for your entire coding session. It's not something you need to use every day, but you'll be happy to know it exists when you need it. Now, the second way I like to think about Git is the principles around it. And there are two principles I swear by. One is to commit often and commit small. Generally, I commit whenever a functional state is achieved. So if I write a function and the project still builds, I'll commit, and this makes it so much easier to reset between states. Another principle I swear by is using branches. Remember, branches are free. There have been so many times I've started working on a new feature, then halfway through a brilliant idea hits me. Except it's not brilliant, it's a detour straight into regret. And because I started experimenting on the same branch, my main branch is absolutely half broken and everything is cooked. If I just made a new branch to begin with, I could have switched back in seconds. My rule here is very simple. Every new idea for the same problem deserves its own branch. So if I have problem A and my solutions are 1, 2, and 3, I'll have three separate branches. No exceptions. A resource I highly recommend is the Git book. Now you don't have to sit around and study it, just read it like a novel. The idea isn't to memorize the commands, it's just to expose you to some ideas. And when you're coding, you can look them up and start applying them. Build systems. Now if Git teaches you control, the shell teaches you speed, build systems will teach you patience. For the longest time, I just treated npm install like an obligatory command, and didn't put too much thought into it, until I noticed my node modules folder was large enough to have a postcode. Build systems are one of those things that secretly save you hours. And the great part is learning them is pretty fun, because you get to go and break things on purpose. Most build systems have decent documentation, but how I recommend doing it is simply get into the habit of building with verbose output. A fun game I like to play is just commenting out certain packages, seeing what that does to my program, and then finally trying to cram all of it into a docker container. You might find learning build systems to be a bit redundant. What's the point? They're just commands. This isn't helping me write code any faster, make more money, and eventually meet a Japanese waifu. So what's the point? If you can't explain how your code builds, you're just kind of praying it works. And that's an excellent strategy to achieve a real production outage without the help of sales. Fundamentally, you don't have to sit around and grind Git or whatever. Please don't grind Git, or go and read every single page of the NPM documentation. It's just about getting a bit more exposure to your tools. If I just spent a weekend or even a lazy Sunday afternoon learning these things, I would have saved so much time, energy, effort, and an anxiety diagnosis just because I'd know where to look. Remember, programming isn't a memory game. It's a problem-solving one. So go and get exposure, build stuff, break stuff, and have some fun doing it.
And once you've built something worth showing, you need a place to put it. That's where Savala comes in, the sponsor of today's video. Savala is an all-in-one platform for managing all your infrastructure. And I mean all of it. And they're not just a wrapper for a random cloud. Your CDN, DNS, and firewall runs on Cloudflare, while your servers and databases are powered by Google Cloud. They've built all of the abstractions so you can just focus on writing code. You can deploy from GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, and even Docker containers. Once it's live, you get build pipelines, logs, and all the essentials of a modern dev platform. Now the coolest part is you can make changes with a single click. Need a CDN for your static assets? Settings, check, and done. You can deploy almost anything, from Next.js to Django, Laravel, Pocketbase, Elixir, and of course WordPress. Savala knows WordPress inside and out. It's a part of their DNA thanks to their parent company, Kinsta. So go ahead and deploy your app before your coffee gets cold by checking out Savala at savala.com slash bigboxsuite. You'll also get $50 in free credit. Thank you so much to Savala for sponsoring this video, and thank you for your time. I am Big Box.